I want to see the decimal. Make sure you're reading the question. Let's see who else here. I can change one word and change the entire problem. Cheryl Brown is here. Stephen is here. John's here. Ariel's here. Clinton's here. Allie's here. Sharice is not. Wicket is here. Dominique is not. McKnight is not. Hannah is here. Pratt is here. Quinn is here. Amethyst is here. Jose is here. Linda is here. Kiana is not. I can see it in your um, calculator if you want to. I want a decimal. I can't keep up numbers in my brain. off you are. Good, good, good. All right. Good. Yay! So, if a hundred DVRs are there, um, in, in inventory, five of the hundred, so a hundred is the total, five are defective, so five are broken. What is the probability that the randomly selected DVR is not defective? So, you can do it two ways. You can say, what is the probability that it's defective? And then do, for the not, it would be 1 minus the defectives. So, the defectives are how many? 5 over 100. And then you would do 1 minus 5 over 100 which is 95 over 100, or 0.95. Or you can say, well, if five are broken, how many work? 95. 95. Because what does not defective mean? It works. it works. So you could have done it that way as well. We good? All right, let's look at this one. Um, Y'all, this one is scary. All the people who take drug tests, this one talks about the, the person who's taking the drug test uses drugs. And this shows that they use drugs, that test pops positive. Then that is a true positive. They use drugs and it shows that they were using drugs. This means they were using drugs, but the uh, test came back clean. That's a false negative. They said there's no drug use, but they were using drugs. Okay, This one is a false positive. They were not using drugs, but it came back saying you're a druggie. And this one says they're not using drugs, and it was a negative. So which ones are the correct ones? Using drugs, using drugs. Not using drugs, not using drugs. So these are the ones that are the good tests. They're telling what's happening. These are the ones that are not so good. This is a druggie that comes up clean, and this is a clean person that's saying it's a druggie. Okay? Find the probability, what makes me happy over total, of selecting someone who does not use drugs. So what makes me happy is a not using drugs. So find the probability that they do not do drugs. Okay. Now for this one, we really don't need to do the one minus because there's a not drugs on there. So do you see all my not drugs? Not drugs 
is going to be all these. These are all the people who do not use drugs. So 25 and 480 are all the people who do not use drugs. How am I going to get my total? We're going to add everybody together. The 45, the 25, the 5, and the 480. So when I add my top numbers, it is 505. And when I add my bottom numbers, it's 555, which gives me 0.909. Now, my second question says, Part B, does it appear to be reasonable as an estimate of the proportion of the adult population does not use drugs? So this is what we think, 90.9% does not use drugs. So can we say that most of the adult population does not use drugs based on this? Yes. Because 90.9% of my table does not use drugs. And then down, um, hold on. All right, let me grab this because I want to do a new. Same chart. I want y'all to try that one. What's the probability that someone got a false negative? They used drugs, but it came up that they didn't use drugs. Out of? 55. Mm -hmm. So, my false negatives are here. That's what makes me happy. So the probability of a false negative <coughs> I know, I keep trying to write and it keeps erasing more. Probability of a false negative. So my false negatives are five. We've already added up our total. Our total is when we add up everybody. That was 555. So when I go to my calculator, 5 over 555, 0 0.009 or 0 0.9%. So is it likely that if you go for a drug test, you're going to pop a false negative? Why is it not likely? Why is it unlikely? Because it is less than 5%. And remember, when we look at 5%, we have to make sure that our probability is in terms of percents. Now, down at the bottom is just reminding you that you can write probability as a fraction or a decimal or a percentage. Um, if the probability does not happen, it's going to be a zero. If the probability isn't going to happen, it's a one. The probability of something happening, we call probability of A. And if it's a not or a complement, we put that line over it. That means it's not going to happen. All right. We, did I take the odds page out of y'all's? We don't do odds. You don't have odds anymore. It goes straight to 4 two. Did y'all's notes go straight to 4 two? Okay, take odds out. We're not doing odds anymore. Okay. There's a big difference when you're doing or and when you're doing and. This is 4.2. And I'm going to, a lot of people don't realize the difference between the word or and and. So if I said, like when I was in between husbands, when I was in between my baby daddy and my current husband, when I'm dating. You know, when I first started dating, I said, I want someone who's rich and tall. Okay? Rich and tall. That means they got to be wealthy and they got to be up here. 
So and means it has to be in both of them. Okay? So and means it has to be off of both lists. Must be both. <coughs> But then after a couple months or a couple of years, it turned into, okay, I'm happy if he's rich or I'm happy if he's tall. So if he's rich and a midget, I'd be okay. If he's tall and broke, I'd be okay. So or means it could be an either one. So there's a big difference between and and or. And you're really picky. It's got to be in both lists. Or can be in either one. Now, another way that I talk about it, just so that you can get it in, um, so this one can be either one. Now, another way that I think about it is I have a child and I have a stepchild. And so when they were both living at, my stepchild is now married and gave me a precious grandbaby. But when they were both living at home and I was trying to buy presents, is it, I want to buy a present for Madison and Josh, or is it, I want to buy a present for Madison or Josh? Those are totally different things. Do I want to make Madison and Josh happy, or do I want to make Madison or Josh happy? So if I listed all of Madison's wants here, and I listed all of Josh's wants here, so if this was Madison's Christmas list, that's Madison's Christmas list, and this is Josh's Christmas list, if I want to make them both happy, I can only choose from right here. Because everything on this list makes Madison happy. Everything on this list makes Josh happy. The only thing that's going to make them both happy is where they cross, which is probably money and telephones or whatever. But other than that, they probably have nothing else in common. So if it's an and, it makes them both happy. It's super picky. Now, if I said, okay, right now is the day before Christmas. As long as I make one of them happy, I'm okay. So if I take this same... So now, if I say I want to make Josh or Madison happy, if I choose here, did I make one of them happy? If I chose here, did I make one of them happy? If I chose here, did I make one of them happy? If I chose here, did I make one of them happy? If I chose here, did I make one of them happy? Is Madison or Josh happy? Okay. So if I have or, I can choose from anywhere on anybody's list. So if you're doing or, you can choose on any list. If you're doing and, you have to choose on the overlap list. So or can be anybody's list. And is going to be the overlap list. It's according to how picky they're going to be, or how picky you're going to be. And we're going to be doing these in just a minute. I just wanted you to understand the difference between and and or. Now, we're going to start off with some easier problems. Um, how we combine events, or versus and. Okay. We're going to start off with or. Now, let me cover up so that we can... Um, start right here. The spinner shown at the left is spun. The spinner is equally likely to land on each number, which means it's not rigged. Find the probability that the spinner lands on a multiple of three or a number greater than five. Okay? Because it has the word or, that means it can be on any list. It doesn't have to be the overlapping. So, I want to know the probability that it's a multiple of 3 or that it's greater than 5. 
So what's the probability that it's a multiple of three? One. Three out of three. Three out of three. It could be a three or it could be a six, right? Sorry. Go with me. So two out of how many totals? A. Two out of A. What is the probability that it's greater than five? This one, this one, this one. Is five greater than five? No. So three out of eight. Now, is there any double dips? When I say double dips, those are ones that were counted twice. So in the green, I used ten. I used three and six. In the blues, I used six, seven, and eight. See how I'm using the number six twice? I'm counting six twice. That's what I call a double dip. So you got to take out one of those sixes. So you do the probability of this, you do the probability of this, and then you take away anything that you counted twice. I only counted this once, I only counted this once, and I only counted this once. But I counted this twice. So I've got to take one away. So I'm going to take away one of the sixes. So it's going to be two eighths plus three eighths minus one eighth. What's two plus three? Five minus one. There's my answer. So you do the probability of the first happening, the probability of the second happening, but then you have to take away double dips. Was it counted in more than one thing? And your double dip is going to be this one, because it was counted in more than one thing. Now, that is what this <coughs> formula is showing you. You're doing the probability of event A, the probability of event B, and then you're subtracting your double dips. Probability of A minus the <coughs> plus, probability of B minus the double dips. Let's do another one. Um, okay, who in here does not know about a deck of cards? Does anybody not know about a deck of cards? Let me pull it up just to show you, to make sure. Now, up until now, y'all have been um, given the deck of cards, but you didn't really need them. Go to images. <coughs> All right, it'll look something like this. Let me pull it over so y'all can see it. Oops, I don't know why I just did that. Let me pull this, 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 and this. Alright, so for those of you who are not familiar with the deck of cards, how many cards are in a deck? 52. Um, half of them are black, half of them are red. Okay. We have diamonds and hearts that are red. We have spades and clubs that are black, okay? You have ace through ten, and then these are called face cards because they have faces on them. We good? Now, it says a card is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. Find the probability that the card is red or a queen, okay? So, we need to do... The probability of red plus we need to do the probability of a queen then we need to take away any double dips if anything was counted twice 
That's not what they call it, that's what I call it. <coughs> okay. So, what is my bottom number going to be in my fractions? 52. Because there's 52 cards in a deck. We good so far? Now, for my first fraction, I am looking for reds. There's 13 here and there's 13 here, which makes 26. We cool? Now, what about my queens? How many queens do I have? I have four queens. Do I have any double dips? Two queens. I have two that have been double dipped. That one and that one have been double dipped. They've been counted twice. So it's 26 minus 4 plus 2. I didn't type that in right. It's 26 plus 4 minus 2 is 28 over 52. And if I want the fraction, or if I want the decimal, or if I want the percent. So this would be my decimal answer, this would be my fraction answer, and 53.8 would be my percent answer. That wasn't that bad, was it? As long as I'm doing it? or ors. Alright, the next problem kind of gets some people because they forget about what probability means. Not that this is a hard problem. They just forget what probability means. So, for this one. Find the probability of randomly selecting a school with fewer than 500 students. Fewer than 500 students. So probability of less than 500. So how would I do probability of less than 500? What would I use? Give it to you, gentlemen. What numbers would I use for less than 500? This one and this one. Because the green is 500 and more, the yellow is 1,000 and more. We good? So 27.4 plus 30.2. I have a lot of people who tell me that's the answer. What does that give you? 4, 5, 6, 57.6. I have a lot of people who say, oh, it's good, I'm done. That's the answer. What's the thing for probability? What makes me happy over total? All you've done is the what makes me happy part. What's the total? Love you. It is 100%. A lot of people forget to put that. They forget to oh, got a little carried away right there. They forget to put over a hundred percent. So when I go to my calculator, it's going to be fifty-seven point six over a hundred. And when y'all get missed this on my math lab, you're gonna be like, oh, I had the right answer. I just had the decimal in the wrong spot. Y'all, the difference between a hundred dollars and a dollar is the decimal in the wrong spot. It's wrong. Okay. This is the right answer. It is not 57.6. You've got to put that over 100. When it says probability, you've got to have a top and a bottom. Alright. I'll let you try this one. I want a decimal to three places. 
decimal to three places, or you can show me your calculator. You an answer? No. Was part of that? No. Oh, I don't know. I just looked at the answer. <laughs> um. All right, I have one so far. One. upper class is working. My upper class, I mean my working class is here, right? And my lower class is here. Is there any double dips? Yes. 929 over 254. Is the red and the black overlapping? No. no. This is my working class. This is my lower class, so there's no double dips. They're not overlapping, they're not touching. Okay, so when I go to my calculator and I do, not that, go away, close, hit the wrong button. So now when I do 929 minus 254, it's going to be 675 over 3078. I did something wrong. I was. I will see if you are paying attention. <laughs> My bad. There we go. There's your answer. And I said I just wanted the decimal, but we know that they can be fraction whatever. All right, let's do another one of those. This is a knot. And this is how they're going to be on the test. They're going to be all mixed up. 
Decimal to three places. I want a knot. Not identify as upper or lower class. Yeah, same problem. I just pulled it down so it'd be plain. I'll come look in just a second. <laughs> 